Hi, this is the second module of this week. And after you have done all your modeling and your analysis, now you know everything about who you want to talk to and what you want to record in your transcription, is the time to actually do the transcription. And the first things we wanted to record into transcription is the structure of our manuscript, pages, and how to connect our pages to the facsimile. You may have uh, seen before these elements, uh, we talk about the LB element, the line break, but it's not alone. It's part of a family, the family of the milestones. We do have other elements like PB, page break. We have an element for the column break, CB, and one for the gathering break, GB. And all of them are empty element, meaning that when you use them, you have only one of them. You don't have two tag opening and closing, and you have a slash immediately after the B. You see, for the page break, you can also provide a page number, and that is done via an attribute N that you can use within your PB. Let's go back to the uh, exercise we did together last week and look at this uh, encoding a little bit better. You can see that we have used in this version an element PB and elements LB. Notice also that have been used at the beginning. So meaning that I, when I have the beginning of a page, I use my PB and I use LB at the beginning of each line on my paragraph. That is each, including the very first one. So you see there that immediately after your opening P, you have an LB element to mark the beginning. That is very counterintuitive because we are used to put normally a vertical line, a vertical bar at the end of one line. But in TI, it's the beginning. It's very important. So you see here, I've used uh, both of them, LB and PB. You see also on the third line, I use an attribute break equal no. Why is that? It is used in the TI to mark that the line break occurs in the middle of the word. The word in this case is conceived. After con, it goes in a new line. So this attribute is saying LB is not actually breaking the word. So it's very important. And if you have this case, you use it. So in, in a case, you will be able to reconjunct the two bits of the words in case you want to present it in a way that is not considering the LBs. Once you have done that, you may want to also to be able to consider how to connect your markup with the images. It is now custom to present your transcriptions uh, side by side with your image, the image of the facsimile. How do you do that? You use an element called facsimile in TI. Now, the facsimile is, more, is an element that encodes a big section, which is uh, to be found in between the TI header and the text. You see in the example, so you have your TI element, which is the root element. You have the TI header, where you remember we put the metadata in, and then you have the facsimile. And after the facsimile is finished, you put the text. So you will list within the facsimile element all the images that you need to connect that to the translation, to the transcription. So the facsimile elements contains a long list of surface elements. Surface is to be used for each of the pages, or it can be an opening, or what is your uh, surface, the one you consider for your manuscript. Let's assume it's page for the sake of the argument. Within each surface, you will use an element called graphic. Graphic is an empty element, once again, uh, that provides a link to an image. The image can be on your computer or it can also be online because uh, the graphic element contains an attribute URL in which you will give the path to your file, again, in your computer or somewhere on the internet. Within surface, you can have several uh, other things. You can have zones. We will talk about them in one of the optional modules of this MOOC. But
But it's just to say that is also a possibility, you give the possibility of zoning your image and making a more refined and punctual reference between the image and the text if you need it. Your surface should carry an attribute called XML ID. What it is, it is a form of label, an identifier that you apply to any element when you need it to be able to make a reference to it. And since we want to connect our surface, our image to the transcription, you definitely need to provide something in XML ID. Remember, XML IDs are unique, are identifiers, and they have to start with the letter, not with a number. The graphic element within surface, as I said, has a compulsory URL attribute. You can have several graphics within a surface because you may, for instance, have high resolution, low resolution, and uh, ultraviolet images uh, all together. And, uh, uh, but all of them should also, it's good practice to say, carry some attribute to give the dimension of that in pixel. And that helps also to make sure that the right image is actually used also for processing. You see an example of usage of our graphic element in there. There's a URL attribute and there is then a path to a file that is in your computer. The two dots and the slash means you have to go up one folder with respect to where your XML file is, and you will find a folder called images within which you have a file called csg0050 underscore 401.jpg. Notice that width and height have not only a digit to give the a number to give the dimension, but also the PX, the pixel, that is actually compulsory. So you see here an example of the uh, encoding of a facsimile that has two surfaces. The surface number one, I've used also the attribute N to say that is page number one. And then you have an XML ID that say what is the identifier of that particular image. Inside you have a graphic element that points to my file where it's in my computer with the dimension and everything. So you see that both surfaces have now an ID. Since they have an ID, I can use this ID to make a connection between my transcription and the facsimile. So once I've done that in my transcription, I can use an attribute called fax. Which, within which I make a reference to my ID, the one in surface. So in PB, for instance, which is the element I use for page break, I use the attribute fax. And in the value of the fax is the ID I have declared on my surface. Since it is a reference, you need to have an ash the symbol that we use on Twitter, for instance, to say this is actually an ID that is defined somewhere within my file that precedes it exactly there. So if you look now at the file, the way it is encoded altogether, we have added to the previous version the facsimile. We have an XML ID that is put on the surface and we have a reference to it to our fax attribute. And so you've done it. You have connected your transcription to your facsimile. If you now perform the transformation we have seen before on uh, oxygen, you will be able to have your transcription and your image, the same uh, HTML output.